In this recording we shall look at when equality of complex numbers is satisfied and then see how this can help us to solve a certain type of algebra problem. And if we have two complex numbers, Z1 equal to A1 plus B1J and Z2 equals A2 plus B2J where J is the complex number satisfying j squared equals negative 1 and a1 and b1, a2 and b2 are all real numbers. Then a1 and a2 being real numbers and not multiplied by j at all, these are often referred to as the real part of the complex number while the b1 and b2 that are multiplied by j are the imaginary part. And the complex numbers Z1 and Z2 are equal if and only if their real parts A1 and A2 are equal to each other and also B1 and B2, their imaginary parts, are equal. So this can be useful in solving problems such as the one shown here. Suppose we want to find X and Y given we know that 3 minus 2J times x plus yj equals 2 times x minus 2jy plus 2j minus 1. And the first step in solving a problem like this will be to make it look simpler by expanding the brackets. So on the left we have 3 times x, that will be 3x minus 2j times x for consistency, when I'm writing this out so it's tidier to simplify, I'll put the j at the end, so that'll become minus 2x times j, then plus 3 times yj, so 3yj, and minus 2j times yj, so that will become minus 2j yj, and I'll put those j's together at the next step. And on the other side, expanding that first bracket, 2x minus 2 times 2 will be 4 times y times j plus 2j minus 1. So how can we simplify this? Well, we have 3x minus 2xj plus 3yj minus 2 times y times j times j, which is 2y j squared and on the right 2x minus 4yj plus 2j minus 1. Not much else we can do with that just yet. So the part to focus on here is j squared. We said that the way j is defined is so that j squared equals negative 1. So writing out the rest of this looking the same for now, this minus 2yj squared becomes minus 2y times negative 1, which becomes positive 2y. And then writing out the rest of that expression as before. And this all looks pretty messy, but what are we wanting to actually do? We're wanting to find x and y. How are we going to do this? Well, by equality of complex numbers, if we can rearrange the left-hand side, so that it's of the form a1 plus b1j, that is group all real numbers together and group all the parts multiplied by j together and then do the same on the right hand side to get an expression a2 plus b2j, we would then be able to equate the real and imaginary parts to find what x and y are equal to. So which parts on the left are real numbers? That'll be the parts without j in, so 3x plus 2y. So I'll group those together. And the other parts are all multiplied by j. So I'll take j out as a common factor, so that that gives us negative 2x plus 3y times j. Doing the same on the right. Real numbers, again meaning numbers not multiplied by j once we simplified. 2x minus 1 and the other parts are multiplied by j. Negative 4y plus 2, 
those are multiplied by j. So the idea is now we can equate the real part and the imaginary part because effectively this can be thought of as a1 plus b1j equal to a2 plus b2j. So these numbers are equal on the left and right if and only if the real parts a1 equals a2 which means 3x plus 2y equal to 2x minus 1 and similarly if the imaginary parts b1 which is negative 2x plus 3y is equal to b2 which is negative 4y plus 2 and we now need to solve these simultaneous equations for x and y and if we call these equations 1 and 2 equation 1 subtracting 2x from both sides that just becomes x plus 2y equals negative 1 and making x the subject of that we could do that by so making x the subject we get x equals negative 1 minus 2y and we could then substitute that into the other equation so looking at equation 2 now could simplify that a bit first negative 2x plus 3y equals negative 4y plus 2 if we subtract 3y from both sides that will just look a little bit simpler giving negative 2x equals negative 7y plus 2 and if we call these results 3 and 4 we could then for instance substitute the right hand side of 3 in here to get negative 2x becomes negative 2 times negative 1 minus 2y and on the right in equation 4 we still have negative 7y plus 2 which becomes 2 plus 4y equal to negative 7y plus 2 rearranging that to add 7y to both sides we get 11y and subtracting 2 from both sides equals 0 so we find that y equals 0 we could then substitute that result back into either of our earlier equations probably simplest to just substitute it into the result we found here x equals negative 1 minus 2y so x equals negative 1 minus 2 times 0 for y giving negative 1 so therefore we have found that we require x equals negative 1 and y equals 0 in order to satisfy the equations we started with so the main point to note is that when you have an expression like this involving complex numbers where you want to solve for unknowns such as x and y the first step is to expand out any brackets then group real and imaginary parts on each side so that you can then equate the real and imaginary parts in order to find any unknowns